time now for my special guest, uh, one of the country's most high-profile businessmen, uh, former owner of Crystal Palace FC, Mr Simon Jordan, who, uh, Simon, this week I'm listening to uh, my favourite show on the radio, Eamon Holmes, and I hear you telling him Eamon, yeah. um, about a truly harrowing experience that occurred this week to you in Croydon. Tell us about it. My father lives in Croydon and one of the reasons why I bought Crystal Palace Football Club is because he'd played for them as a, as a kid. And Anyway, on the way there, uh, someone comes up beside me on a motorcycle and just says, give me your effing watch. Uh, so my default reaction is no. So he pulls gun out and puts it in my face and says, uh, I'm going to shoot you in the face. <sighs> for reasons best known to myself, so we'll, we'll go on then. Um, and it, <laughs> Blimey, and ballsy. It, he's now, if you don't give me this watch, I'm going to shoot you in the effing face, you see. My father gets elevated at this point, and he's, uh, you know, he's like, hold on a second, and at that very moment, I'm suddenly thinking, this, this kid could shoot me, but yeah. more likely, he could shoot me and my father. So, you know, I hand him over a watch, you know, and, and off he goes into the... Uh, vroom, off he goes, and that was How that. did you feel afterwards? I mean, you're, you're describing it to me in a very cool way. You must have been very shaken up. No. You I, don't get shaken up? You're not like, traumatised by the experience? No, no, not at all, because it, nothing happened. Ah. It didn't happen to me. Well, well, Simon, I think your response to it's uh, admirable, and I, I would say that if you are in the market for a replacement... <laughs> I've had all these jokes. I've Don't got a wonderful it. Casio. Yeah, mate. Fourteen ninety nine. You've got a stopwatch, an alarm, and a light, which is really handy if I've it's night time. I've had the John Candy gift being sent to me left, right, and centre yeah. to Uncle Buck. Every time yeah. I go to talk sport, I'm asked what the time is. Yeah. I've, got, I've got it going all on. Do I've you think the... London's getting rougher? I do. I think there's a culture and a generation now that attaches no value to life, that are escalating based upon what they think they're entitled to and it's got to be stopped and the police have got to be given the resources to get in front of these people and really put them to book so that they get their minds concentrated about the consequences of their actions. Now you're a big football man, a uh, lot of debate over the last couple of weeks after what happened in Salisbury yeah. about England boycotting the World Cup in yeah. Russia this summer. What's your position on that? I, I don't think politics belongs anywhere near sport. I loathe it. I loathe politicians piggybacking off on sport. I loathe moron MPs that know nothing about sport trying to influence the thinking of sports people. You know, sport is very influential. Sport does influence and change people's lives. And I understand the, 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 you know, the gravity of this situation, but there is not, there is not a place for politics in sport. You must have considered politics before. Yeah, very much so, because I think affecting and changing directions of people's lives and being strong and authentic... We live in a country where there isn't authenticity. We live in a country where people don't answer questions. They redirect, they redirect, they redirect. Politics interests me, and holding people to account interests so me So you well. might fancy it what, on what yeah, side, or maybe you go on your own side? Look, you know, I, in, in my prescriptive outlook towards politics, I have changed my parties based upon the party's policies at the time and the leaders that were in place. Mm. We live in a country where we've got, in America, we've got a, a leader that can't politic and we've got, in this country, we've got a politician that can't lead. Yeah. You know, and I believe that people need to be led and they need strong direction, they need strong motivation. So, either side... I knew it, I knew it, you're a Corbyn man. <laughs> I knew it, I'm I not... can just tell, no. Simon. Yeah, yeah, with, with, with his 27% corporation tax. Yeah, I'm right out there for Corbyn, yeah. <laughs> um, right, on that note, I'm going to end on the following fantastic joke. Simon, do you know what time it is? Time you got a new watch. That's the that's what you're involved in here. That's the level why, of why am I here? that's the level of why, comedy why that you are involved in. You're welcome.